Hello everyone, welcome to this demo on CAN Multi-ID Transmit and Receive using the TI F28390 Launchpad. Refer to the document titled CAN Mailbox Multiple ID Support that is provided with this demo for additional information along with the video. This demo model will demonstrate a workflow on how to achieve multiple CAN ID transfer and receive from the given mailbox. Right now, the eCAN transmit and receive blocks supported by the TIC2000 support package support only the configuration of a single CAN message for the given mailbox. This is a static configuration and cannot be updated or modified in runtime. This will restrict the user to use not more than 32 CAN message IDs. But in an actual system, like an automotive application would have requirement to support more than 32 CAN message IDs. The following workflow will help achieve the same. If you look into the documentation under the detailed design section, it is mentioned that mailbox one is used to transmit the message IDs 130 and 132 and mailbox 2 is used to transmit the message IDs 230 and 232. That way we will be able to demonstrate how using a single mailbox we will be able to transmit multiple message IDs. We would also reconfigure mailbox 9 and mailbox 6 as receive mailbox to receive these message IDs via loopback. We use custom code to reconfigure the given receive mailbox to enable the acceptance filtering and filtering mask. These settings will enable us to receive a range of message IDs. Hence the transmitted IDs, namely 130 and 132, can be received by mailbox 9 and message IDs 230 and 232 can be received by mailbox 6. The rest of this document talks about these details. Uh, now let's move to the model and run it in external mode and view results. Let's quickly touch upon the model. As discussed before, message IDs 130 and 132 would be transmitted over mailbox 1. And one thing to notice here is we are using the CAN pack block before the transmit block. So the advantage the CAN pack block would give is it gives an option to specify the message identifier and once we do that the CAN pack block settings for the CAN identifier would basically override the settings that we have done in the CAN transmit block for the identifier. Thus effectively we will be able to update different message IDs in the mailbox one namely 130 and 132. On the similar lines, message IDs 230 and 232 would be transmitted via mailbox 2. On the receive side, using the custom code, we would reconfigure the receive mailbox and once the reconfiguration is done uh, during the system initialization phase, the receive mailboxes will now be capable of receiving these transmitted message IDs namely 130 and 132 would be received by the mailbox 9 and 230 and 232 would be received by mailbox 6. Please note again here that the message identifier that is provided in the block mask is not of significance because the reconfiguration of the mailboxes will enable the mailbox to receive the IDs which fall into the range as defined by the acceptance filtering and the filtering mask. We are also making use of the hardware interrupt block to read the CAN messages that are received in the receive mailbox. We are basically using CAN interrupt line 0 to read the messages that are received in mailbox number 9 namely 130 or 132 and we are using can interrupt line 1 on mailbox number 6 to read the messages 
namely 230 R232. Now coming to the part on how we begin the transmission. Please note this model is set up with a step time of 1 second and we are using a pulse generator block to basically trigger the transmission. In order to better understand this scheme, let's go back to the documentation. As can be seen here, the pulse generator block would basically trigger the transmission of the messages 130 and 230 from mailbox 1 and mailbox 2 for the first 3 seconds and then for the next 7 seconds there is no transmission and in the next 3 seconds we would again begin the transmission on mailbox 1 and mailbox 2 but now with CAN IDs 132 and 232 and the scheme continues. Now coming to the data that is being sent as part of the CAN message. If you look for CAN message 130 and 230, we are sending a counter value which is incremented by 1 every time this subsystem is called. For CAN message 230, we are also passing an additional signal which is having the value of the identifier itself. And when it comes to CAN message 132 and 232, we are sending a counter value, but this time the counter value is incremented by 2. And for 232, we are sending the identifier value also. To gain an understanding on the working of the model, we run it in external mode on a F28-3790 launchpad. Few things to quickly notice are message IDs. 130 and 132 are received in mailbox 9. Message IDs 230 and 232 are received in mailbox 6. And message IDs 130 and 230 are transmitted together and it is the same reason they are received together. Similarly, 132 and 232 are transmitted together and they are received to together. Please note for CAN message identifier 130 and 230, we are sending payload that is incremented by 1 for first 3 seconds when the transmission begins and for the next 7 seconds there is no transmission happening. So in order to understand that, let's wait for the next time when we receive 130 and 230 and try to understand how this works. So next time when we receive 130, observe the counters, they will increment by 1 for only 3 times. And then for the next 7 seconds, there is no activity. And then we switch to CAN messages 132 and 232, where we increment their data value by a factor of 2. So let's wait for the CAN message ID is 132, 232 to be received next time and observe how the count increases by a factor of 2. Also note, during the time of those 7 seconds when we don't do any transmission, we continue to show the last received CAN ID as well as the last received payload. That is how the eCAN receive block would basically give the output. Hope you got a basic overview on the working of this demo model and please refer to the documentation that is provided for additional details. Thank you.